Hey there guys, this is a special video for the IB graduates of the class of 2018. If you were an HL IB Econ student, you probably remember this question from HL Paper 3. I've gotten so many messages from both teachers and students about how to solve this question, so I thought I'd do a quick video in which I walk you through the solution to this infamous HL question about Moscow World Cup ticket pricing. So let's get started. Let's have a look at the question and we'll walk through the solution together. So it starts with this prompt. The final of the World Cup is expected to be held in the Luzhniki Stadium, Moscow. The capacity of the stadium is 80000 That's important. The expected cost of holding the final is US $12 million, which is not depending on the number of people attending the match. Also very important. All tickets will be sold for the same price. Also a very important clue that's going to help you later on in this problem. Then you're given this graph, which seems to show the demand for World Cup final tickets. In other words, the price per ticket from $1,600 down to $0, and the quantity demanded in terms of hundreds of thousands of tickets sold. All right, let's go look at the questions themselves. Okay, the first question, state the value of the price elasticity of supply for tickets to the World Cup final. Now, you might say, well, I'm not given any price and quantity combinations. I don't have any idea how to calculate the price elasticity of supply. Well, this is kind of one of those trick questions, guys. The capacity of the stadium is 80,000 people. That means that no matter what the price is, the quantity supplied is going to be 80,000. If the quantity supplied does not change, even as the price changes, that's the definition of perfectly inelastic supply. You'll recall from your study of microeconomics that if supply is perfectly inelastic, then the value is zero. So there's your solution to the first question there. PES is zero. Now that leads us into the second question. In the diagram above, draw and label the supply curve for tickets at the World Cup final. Well, if supply is perfectly inelastic at a quantity of 80,000, then that's pretty darn easy to draw. You just got to draw yourself a vertical supply curve at a quantity of 80,000. So there's our supply of tickets to the World Cup. All right, next part says draw the marginal revenue curve for tickets to the World Cup final. Now, this is one that you may have stumbled on if you didn't remember a very simple rule about monopoly pricing. So the stadium here, or you could say the World Cup organizers, have a pure monopoly on World Cup final ticket prices. They're the only ones selling tickets to the World Cup final. And you'll recall that when a price maker sets a single price for its output, its marginal revenue curve will slope twice as steeply as demand. It's going to start at the same point, but the slope is going to be twice as steep. So twice as steep means it's going to cross the horizontal axis at a quantity of 60 because the demand curve crosses at a quantity of 120. So my, my marginal revenue curve is going to look something like this. There's the marginal revenue curve. Because the organizers of the World Cup are going to charge a single price, that was a clue in the prompt, a single price, the marginal revenue curve will have twice the slope of the demand curve. All right, let's look at the next prompt and the final prompt here. Using the diagram and your answers above, explain how the organizers could achieve their goal of profit maximization. Okay, to answer this, we have to review the profit maximization rule. The profit maximization rule. Well, you should certainly remember this. It's true for every kind of firm, whether it's a perfectly competitive firm, a monopolistic firm, a monopolistically competitive firm. Firms should always produce up to the point where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost. Well, wait a minute. I don't have a marginal cost curve here. What do I do? Do I just draw one? Do I just put one somewhere on the graph? No, of course not. That would be irresponsible. So rather than drawing the marginal cost curve, we've got to think about what is the marginal cost to the organizers of the World Cup of selling an additional ticket. Well, here's the thing. Look at the prompt again. We have a clue up there. The cost of holding the final, the cost of holding the final, that's something about cost there, is $12 million, which is not depending on the number of people. So what does that mean? It means whether zero people attend or 120,000 people attend, the cost to the organizers of selling one more ticket is always zero. So in green, I'm going to label my marginal cost curve. It's zero. It's always zero. Marginal cost is zero. It doesn't cost the stadium or the organizers of the World Cup a single dollar to sell one more ticket. The tickets might even be electronic. There's not even a cost of printing the tickets. It's just zero. 
So now we have all we need to identify the profit maximizing quantity and the profit maximizing price. The World Cup organizer should sell tickets up to the point where the marginal cost equals the marginal revenue, which is at 60,000 tickets. Let's do this in red. 60,000 tickets. So what price do they charge? Oh my gosh, it's zero dollars. No, it's not, guys. You gotta remember, you gotta go up to the demand curve to find the price in a monopoly graph. So we're gonna go up to the demand curve, and this is the price at which they will sell 60,000 tickets. All right, so they're gonna charge how much? $800 per ticket. They'll sell 60,000 tickets, and they'll be maximizing their profits. So that's how we solve this problem. One thing to point out is that there's gonna be 20,000 empty seats at the World Cup final. There's gonna be 20,000 empty seats, is that a big deal? Not according to the organizers, they're maximizing their profits. One of the things that makes monopoly markets inefficient is that they tend to underproduce the good and there tends to be a loss of total welfare. There tends to be a deadweight loss because if the market were more competitive, then a greater quantity would be supplied at a lower price. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you found it useful, please subscribe to my channel. You're gonna see a lot more videos like this for both IB students and AP students in the coming months to help you prepare for next year's exam so that you don't get stumped the next time the IB or the AP throws a question like this at you. Here we go.